So welcome everyone. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week. I certainly appreciate each and every one of you. Um, my name is Joe Mazone and I am a teacher at Davies Career and Technical High School in Lincoln, Rhode Island. I teach in the pre-engineering um, career and technical program and I focus on software engineering, the programming part, of course. Um, and I'm here today to get you started with JUnit, which is the unit testing framework for Java code. Uh, I'm also the Computer Science Teachers Association of Rhode Island's president. So anyone that is a CSTA member, um, I appreciate you. If you're not a CSTA member, Computer Science Teachers Association, definitely something to check out uh, for a professional organization. Just to start off, and this will help us just in case anyone else joins uh, in a bit, if you could go over to um, the link I just put in the chat, it's a quick poll just so I can get a pulse on the crowd. Do a little screen share here also. Just in case someone needs a little more guidance on what's going on. And so What you should see once you click on that link or visit that link is exactly what I'm screen sharing right now. And you can actually click skip or you can give me your name. I'm actually not even collecting the names, but it still shows that. And I have two questions. If you go to that poll and then I can check out the results and kind of help me out on what we're gonna focus most on. So if you do click skip again, it's over in the chat. Actually, someone had just jumped back on. So I'm going to put it in the chat again because Zoom kind of gets rid of that. You can go over, click on that poll for me. And uh, it will have these two questions here that you could answer for me. Mainly just want to know if you're familiar with the coding with coding rooms assignments, because that's the uh, program we're going to be using today. Although this unit testing is universal um, for you know any kind of Java, we're focusing on auto grading, but doing unit testing in general. All right, perfect. That helps me out. So first, again, what we're gonna be using is coding rooms. Uh, most of you, I assume, will kind of um, be just kind of following along because we're gonna go over a, a good amount today. Um, but of course, you could try to build some things at, at the same time uh, if you can manage that. What I want to send you over in the chat is let me just talk a little bit about um, JUnit just quickly. Again, JUnit is for um, doing unit tests with Java code. Unit tests being a way that we can um, assert or make sure that a certain piece of code or module or unit of code um, is working as we'd intend it to. It's producing intended results by building test cases um, that we that essentially build um, or uh, we set up to ensure a certain result. So, for instance, if you you have a student build a co build code that's supposed to average uh, four numbers together, you can build certain test cases that test out and make sure it's properly averaging, um, and that the student did it properly. Over in the um, chat, I did give you some documentation to JUnit testing. And one of the things that we're gonna be talking about a lot, and you'll see that is really the essential aspect of unit testing are these assertion methods. So assert equals, assert true. These are kind of what you use to say, hey, when this certain thing happens in the code, when I run this method, 
when I do this or in the student's code this, I want to assert, I want to make sure that their code produces this value if you're saying equals. Or, you know, there's ones that, like I said, true, assert true or assert false. So if you're dealing with Booleans, or you can create your own condition that kind of evaluates to a true or false. And again, it will assert that it's either true, false, equals, or not equals. Um, you can assert and check if one object is the same as another object, things like that. Um, and using those assertions is how the test either fails or passes. And obviously the student's code, if it's ideal in the way you'd want, it would pass each of the test cases you build. Now inside of coding rooms, most of you um, said you're using coding rooms, but there are a couple people that are not. In coding rooms, if you have a subscription or you're on the trial, you'll have access to courses. And in courses, there is a feature called assignments. And that's where you can build student assignments that can be auto-graded with unit testing. Coding Rooms, just to give everyone a little background, does have some other great features like the live classroom and just regular workspaces. Regular workspaces being just a coding environment for students, teacher to just build projects. Live classroom being a live interactive environment with video conferencing like we're doing right now and the programming environment built in. And as of right now, I'm sure Coding Rooms may have some uh, future plans, but courses right now is mainly for you to set up a group of students for your live classrooms and, and be able to lock down the live classroom for that. And of course, these assignments. So I'm gonna go into an example um, classroom for what we're gonna build today. Um, but you could go to courses and you could create your own course um, to start to build some of these things. And so I just clicked in a course and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, make it a little bit bigger for the recording and for you guys. And um, as you can see over here, uh, you can add sections to your course so that um, you know maybe you teach the same class period two and period four and you assign your students to the appropriate section, which allows you to assign the individual assignments um, with different due dates and all that other good stuff. Over in the assignments is where we're building these um, assignments that will also have this unit testing. What we're going to look at first is um, probably the um, most difficult part for somebody to discover when they're doing a unit test. And that is actually just checking the output. The reason being is, and so I'll, I'll give a little explanation. Let me create a new assignment. Output. Typically, you can do tests, and some of you may be familiar that have created assignments. You can do, if you go to this test bench, I'll go over this one more time. In a test case, you can do an input-output comparison. So if you want to just check the output of some code, you can do that. If you want to check, um, you want to provide some input and check the output of code, you can do that, and it will build these test cases. And this is actually really user-friendly. I'm just going to briefly show this off. We're not going to uh, fully review this. I do have another video. Someone mentioned that uh, earlier. I did host a webinar on that, and the video is on YouTube. And um, you can see you can provide input and then the what the output's supposed to be to match up. And it will tell the student if they were the test failed or passed. So it's pretty easy to do that. However, there are some situations where you may want to compare the output in a unit test. So that's what we'll go over first. I'm actually going to delete this test. So first, let's just um, look at an assignment. So let's say I want to build an assignment, very basic, your first week of, of class in your Java class, and you say to the student, this is the prompt area. So uh, if you're not familiar with Coding Rooms assignments, you can develop a prompt, tell the students what they need to do in the assignment. Create code to print hello world with three exclamation points. So uh, I'm also going to 
go over and actually uh, make that code highlight so it stands out a little bit. So create code that to print that or that prints that. I would have probably a better prompt for the students. Now there's a sign, and this is when you actually want to publish it for that um, group of students to be able to see it. We can go to template, and the template is the code that they start off with. I'm actually going to leave this code here. Although, what you'd probably do right for this one is maybe you would, um, you know, remove, you would leave the system dot out print ln. Maybe it's really their one of their first assignments, and you'd let them type in the parentheses there, something like that. I'm actually going to leave this for for a reason though, make it a little bit easier for me to show off something. So I'm going to save that. Template again is what the student starts off with. And then this test bench is where we build our unit tests or any test cases we want. Again, if you're getting started, one of the great things is just this input output comparison, which for this one, we could do that. We could do an input output comparison. But I'm going to actually select unit test. I'm going to call this test case prints hello world because I want to check to make sure that they print hello world. Before we dig into the unit testing fully, I want to point out too that each of these test cases, as you build them, has um, a feedback on test failure. This is any helpful hint you want to give the student if the test fails, if they don't produce the desired result. So for instance, I'm going to say to the student here, make sure your code prints hello world. And then kind of what I talk to students about here, did I put three? Three exclamation points I remember I said. Um, you know, like early on, as I, I talk about string literals and literally it, I want, we want to see the exact characters inside of the string. So let's scroll down to the J unit test now. This is the basic template you'll get in coding rooms. Some other platforms don't provide you with this. You got to kind of build it a little more on your own, but the code we're going to, we're going to provide will kind of be the same. I like that coding rooms provide this nice template for us. The bulk of the unit test is the test cases. And that's what we're looking at right here, this method we're defining here. And this is just, it says default case. They just provide us with an empty one. We can build as many of these test case methods as we'd like to test out many different situations for this. You also see these two here, set up and tear down. And set up and tear down, are for um, anything you want to happen before a test case runs, anything you want to happen after a test case runs. For instance, if you're ever building test cases, you notice there's like a redundant element that you, every, you know, the beginning of each one, you're doing the same thing, the end of each one, you're doing the same thing. You can put it in there. And actually for what we're gonna do, we're gonna do that here. For instance, constructing an array that's gonna be tested out, you could put it inside of the setup for each of the default test cases or something, something like that. What we need to do though, is in order to actually check out the output of our code, we need to import another package here. We're gonna import, import java.io, we import all of, all of those files inside of that package, everything in there in java.io. And we're gonna use that IO for input output. So we can actually capture the, um, we can provide an input stream and we can actually capture the output stream when the student's code runs or when we run something, it prints something, it will actually be able to track what is printed and we'll actually be able to insert our own input stream if we want. That's essentially why we need that. So there are two things that we'll need to do. First is we're going to set up. And now, you know, this is kind of like a, uh, a big setup um, for these. 
moving after we when we go to do this again, I'm just going to copy and paste it in. And I'm going to provide you with some resources that will allow you to kind of copy some of these additional templates, like, oh, a template that can help you with just comparing output or doing input. But we're going to create, uh, we're going to have two variables here. And these variables are going to hold, um, are going to be important for us capturing this output stream. So uh, we're going to create a private final variable of a data type print stream. And this is from that um, java.io. We'll just call it standard out. It's going to be equal to system dot out. And then we need private final byte array output stream. We'll call this output stream capture. And that's going to be equal to a new byte array output stream. Now that we've have these two variables, there's one thing that we want to do in the setup. And in the setup, we're going to set the output to be the output stream captor. Meaning we're now going to capture, instead of outputting to the terminal, we're now going to store the output for us to be able to access. That's essentially what this does. And really, once you know kind of what you need, the nuances of what's actually going on isn't as important. So we're going to create a new print stream. And we're going to give it output stream capture, which is what we created over here. So every time it goes to run a default test case, it's going to do that. It's going to say, OK. Don't no longer print to the terminal. Instead, we're going to capture what's going on in the output. On teardown, though, just in case there's other things in the code, this is just like a, um, a, a nice thing to add to the teardown. If you have multiple test cases and there's other things going on, you want to return the output back to, to be able to work in the terminal so it's normal. So you say system, return the system dot out to the standard out, which is just the normal terminal output. So that's what we that's what we have here. So before you run your test case, we're saying, all right, we're going to keep track of the output. When we're done with it, we return it back to the normal terminal. And then we can build our test case. Now, in our code, the simple code we created, the one thing that's going on in the student's code is the main methods being run, and it's going to print something. So how do we do that? Well, we can just simply say the name of the file, which all I did was leave the default file, but I'll kind of review some small nuances. And the default file's name was main, and I want to run the main method of that. So main dot main. And then as most of you are probably aware, um, the main method has a parameter, right? Of, um, why am I drawing, drawing a blank? String args, cause you're doing Thank a you. lot all at one time. <laughs> exactly, so string array args. Um, and so we need to provide something there. We're not gonna give it anything for that. So we can just say null. And now we can do our assertion. Again, this one's so basic that there really isn't much we have to do here. There's a good amount of setup because we're doing only because we're checking this output, but now we can do our assertion. So I can say assert equals, for instance. And assert equals will, you provide it with what you expect. Let's say I expect hello world with three exclamation points. That's the first parameter. 
So I give it an argument of hello world with three exclamation points. And then we have to actually give it um, the value it's testing against, which is our output stream captor. So that object there. And since we're going to compare it against an actual string, we have to call the two string method for this. So we're going to say two string. And now we're good. So now it's going to assert that this string is equal to the output that's displayed or the output that we capture when we run, when we test the student's code. If you're still thinking to yourself, okay, you just set all this stuff up just to check if it's did hello world, the regular uh, input output comparison could do that. I'll explain in a minute where this could be useful, some test situations and why I like to kind of review this with people first in a minute. But what I can do now is let's go up and you can actually test your, um, or you can run your test cases um, with these buttons up at the top. And these actually are very recent to coding rooms and I'm very grateful for them um, because it makes it a little bit easier. You can run it right on this page. One, you can run the tests that you develop against the model solution. So you can create a model solution and you can run them against the template, which is the student starter code. Let's look at the template for a second. Just again, just so we're reminded what's going on here. We have a Java file called main.java. That's why I said main uh, dot main to run that specific method. And it prints out hello comma world. Let me go back to the test bench now. I'm gonna run this test case that I developed against the template. Now the student, how they run the test cases is they click the submit button and it will run the test cases. And nobody told me I missed a semicolon. Let's go scroll back down. <laughs> semicolon over here. All right, now let me run it again. Good to note though, um, I, I was kind of quick on that. Uh, let me just remove that and run this again. If you do mess up syntax on your test cases, when you go to run the test, it's going to, it's going to tell you. So. You can see uh, this test case tried to run and I have an issue. It's actually in the coding rooms unit test that there's an issue. So you wanna watch for those things. It ha and of course it happens often. Right, now let's run it against the template. Let's look again. <laughs> this is supposed to be set out, just like above here. I think it's because I was thinking system.outprintln. System set out. And now let's run it against. Aha, this is what the student should see if you have it correct. Notice it does give the feedback, which each time that I, I was wrong and I messed it up, it gave feedback anyway. It says, make sure your code prints hello world with three exclamation points. It will show the student, this is just the normal Java unit testing. So this is what would show up if you ran unit tests, just in the normal terminal. And it tells them, expected hello world with three exclamation points, but was hello comma world. Notice the square brackets are around the diff, or the difference between the two. So it's good to start to, to like show students this when you're first doing maybe some auto grading like that, because it kind of helps them. What's great about auto grading in my opinion, is the more instant feedback students get as they're trying to run things. And they're saying, oh, you know, is, is this right? Or is this wrong? You know, you always have that student that wants to know if they're right or wrong all the time. They can kind of run these tests and they can see if they're right or wrong. All right, let me build a model solution now for what this is supposed to look like. And then we can just kind of quickly see um, what 
um, what it looks like when you are correct. So model solution is really great for, especially as you build more complex, you know, um, things, maybe some like FRQs or something in here that they're gonna, they're gonna um, build or, or um, some of the labs and stuff. You're obviously gonna probably want to have a nice model solution for you to refer back to, all right? And the model solution is great for making sure your unit tests are built properly, right? If this is what you're saying is the model solution, it's good to run against that. So I'm gonna create a model solution. What it does when you click that first is it just copies the template. So you start off with the same template the student does. And then of course you can go in and you can actually build what you want it to look like. So I'm gonna do hello world, three exclamation points. Save my changes. The template and the model solution, although Coding Rooms typically auto saves, those you have to actually click the save button to make sure it saves the changes there. I'm gonna go back to the test bench now. I can run tests against the model solution and let's check it out. Aha, expected hello world with space, but was hello world and it looks like it's got a new line character at the end. That's because I told it to just do hello world. Right? I told it to check for hello world with, with nothing there. But the output, because I use print ln, has a new line at the end. Here's what I do. So actually what I typically do for it, it depends on really what you want to check, is I kind of start to build my own um, little thing to 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 do some other stuff. So um, similar, I, sh I should say, similar to the, uh, the regular input output comparison stuff. Now you can manipulate it however you want. So I say, all right, whatever I want the output to be, I don't even want to think about how to lowercase and all that. I just say, okay, to lowercase. And then I also can um, trim, trim off any white space on either side. And I'll replace uh, any spaces with uh, nothing. So then you don't worry if students put extra spaces in and stuff like that. Again, it all really depends on how, how specific you want to be with their comparison. It depends on where you are in the curriculum, really. Later on, when you're doing more complex stuff and you want them, they, you want them to print something, you want to test what's going on, you may not care if they put an extra space and stuff like that. What does it matter? So I said two lower case. I trimmed off, trim, trims off any, any white space and stuff at the ends, and then uh, replace. And I'm going to replace every single spot where there's a space with um, nothing. I'm going to call these same three methods on the output stream now. Again, could I have typed everything over here in all lowercase and made sure there's nothing and replace the spaces? Yeah, I could do that. But what I what I prefer to do is I like to actually just type what I'm what I think they should do, and I then I run these same three methods on their output and what I what I'd actually want them to do for a comparison. And of course, anything you can do with strings, you can manipulate the output or what you'd expect with those same things. So however you want to be able to do it. Now let's run it and see what happens. So I have a model solution. Let's run this. And we're all good. Because I trimmed off that tailing new line. I trimmed off the, the anything in the beginning end that we wouldn't want. I compared everything was all lowercase and this is what the student sees when it's all set and good. One of the byproducts of the way I just did that, though, is that, um, let me go edit the model solution quick, um, is that uh, it will show them the comparison based on converting it to lowercase and all that other stuff. So it all really depends on, on, on what you want when, uh, model solution again. So I just took off one exclamation point just so we can see it wrong, so you guys can see actually what, what the unit test is, is comparing. So notice now the unit test is actually comparing all lowercase without a space, 
says it expected this with this exclamation point, and it got this. So just something to keep in mind that if you do convert it to all lowercase and get rid of the spaces, students will see when they don't get it right that. Most, I haven't, I haven't had an issue with students who are confused by that. Even if they take out the spaces, it will grade it correct. They're still getting the right output. Typically, we would, you would do this right if you wanted them to maybe output um, some calculation or something like that. So there's usually a value that you're really looking for. And you can also find that specific value in the string or look for a specific th thing because now you have all the methods available to search through a string just as you would, you would want to. So you can build whatever you'd like. Now, if you're saying, Joe, you still didn't explain why I would want to build out this complicated test case to just check an output of, of a file. Well, what happens is coding rooms and most of these other um, you know, programs that have auto grading set up, when they run these test cases, it only tests whatever the default file is. What happens with me, the reason why I end up building this out more than just the, the um, regular input output comparisons and stuff is in my template, I end up having a lot of times exercise one, exercise two, like I'll have two different files, Java files in one assignment for them to build. So for example, main uh, one dot Java, and maybe I'm gonna rename this one to main two dot Java. Exercise one, exercise two, question one, question two. Think to maybe some of those labs, the AP labs, they have multiple files that you may need to test different things in. Well, if you need to test out just printing something, you're, it's not gonna help you to do those regular input output comparisons. Instead, let me just fix this so it kind of runs correctly. Actually, is that two? Anyway, it is two. Um, instead, what you may need to do is exactly what I just showed where we set up that output. The reason why that can work well for this situation now, and maybe the prompt is going to be, um, you know, print hello world for the, uh, for this one and print, uh, you know, let's do in main one dot Java. create code to print that and then in main two dot java create code that prints mr mazone let's say um now you can, we have to go over the test bench we would have to edit this to say main, uh, was it one? Yeah, we'll just say main one does, is supposed to do that. Main one dot main, when we call this the main method of main one, it's going to check to see if it's hello world. I'm gonna copy all this code here. Let's build another test case. Prince Mr. Zone unit test and over here all i did was paste the same code so instead of rebuilding it now i'm going to call main two and main two is going to check for mr mazone as the output Now, if I go over to my model solution, well, let's run it against the template quick. This is actually an active bug on coding rooms. After you uh, edit the files in the template or um, anywhere else, let me just make sure the template's saved.
um, you do have to refresh the page for the test cases to work properly. They're act, um, actively working on it, some I discovered recently. But uh, let's run it against the, te the template. Okay. Um, Mr. Mazone was not hello world. And Prince Mr. Mazone, check that. And this hello world's not that. Perfect. Let's go over to the model solution. When you make changes to the template, it doesn't update the model solution. So there's a couple things you can do. Let's say, you know, something simple as this, I can delete this model solution and create a new one. Um, so then I have the appropriate files or I can add the files here myself, the main two file. I'm just gonna delete this and just start with a new model solution. So it recopies the template now that I've edited it. Main one, we're gonna check for. Hello world, main two. Mr. Mazone. All right, so now I have these two printing the appropriate things for my um, model solution. Go over to the test bench. Let me run it against that. Check, make sure everything's good. And it says it's good. And this is what the student would see. Now, there are a couple things, too, I'd like to point out here. Um, there is a point value associated with each, each one. So if you want a certain unit test to weigh more than another one point-wise, for instance, when I um, actually did it show it when I ran this test, um, if not for the students, it tells gives them a percentage of how much they've gotten correct. So this should say 100%. For the teacher, I guess it doesn't it doesn't show it here, but I'm going to open up as a student in a second. Um, so it will calculate the percentage that they got right, but you can weigh them to count more than another. More complex code, you may want to think about doing that. Um, and of course, you can provide feedback when it fails. Let's just take a look at what the student looks like, just in case you haven't seen that. If you want to see the student's view and be able to run the code there and do those things, you can always do that as a teacher. When you go to assign, you can click on the student preview. I'm going to actually open it in a new tab. This URL here, too, that comes when you view it as a student, you can um, post this URL in your learning management system, your LMS, for students to directly access the assignment. It's actually what I do. So I copy this URL. This URL is unique to your specific uh, assignment. So you can copy it and give it to the students. All right, it says, uh, here's the assignment. I'm going to open the assignments workspace. And you, you can saw there was a little thing that said preview as a student. Um, I really like how it always shows the instructions next to what the students are doing. They can just run tests or they can submit. Uh, this is new. It used to just be submit. You can see it actually was the teacher one um, just running tests for me. And now you can see these percentages here, 100%. I got students can students and you as the teacher can see a student's run history. So you can see how many times they ran tests, the time they ran the tests, and what their score was. And you can even open up this to see what went wrong, what went right. So when you go into any student submission, you can go and do that. Of course, as the student, I can go, I can click run. There's gonna be more issues because I just noticed that the, the template isn't right. And it will tell me what's wrong and what's going on. Here, because there's no main one, main two, when I opened it as a student, I think that's just because I was messing around with it and stuff, but I'm gonna follow up with coding rooms on, on that because that isn't the exact behavior that should be happening because I never really opened it as a student, but I have a feeling that their new way of testing it is kind of opening as a student. But you can view it as a student and test things out. And, uh, and I should get 0%, um, I think, when I click Submit here. Submitted. 
score is zero percent. Because you're the teacher, you can actually manually grade it. So I notice I can change this. The students wouldn't be able to change their score. You, when the, the teacher runs this or opens up a student's submission, um, you can change the score if you want. So that is the basics. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show input. I'm gonna show an actual um, cre you know, student created method, what, how that grades. These next ones I'm gonna run a, a little bit faster through um, now, um, but is, are there any questions before we move forward um, to that next, that next step? I'm just gonna let in, somebody had just jumped out by accident. Joe, I have a question. If, yeah, you cool. use, if you use your unit tests to check output of more than one line of, of mm -hmm. output. Great question. Do you, do you just use, you know, put in some escape? Backslash N. Backs, okay, that's what I was wondering. Yep. Just put in backslash Ns and then in spacing. Because I was wondering exactly. if, it was, if it would be better in that case to go ahead and just do the input output testing or nope. if I wanted to or if it would be better to use the unit testing. Yeah, you don't have to. So let's go over to uh, this test bench again. Let's just do a quick little example of that. Let's say on uh, the second one here, this main two that I created. Mm -hmm. um, let's say we want it to uh, say Mr. Bazone backslash and on the next, and then another print statement that says, uh, he is awesome. Okay. So um, notice I just have that in here backslash n and that's essentially going to uh, create the new line for me. Um, same thing with input we're going to check in a minute if you want multiple inputs it's just going to be the backslash n is going to you're going to separate each input by that. Because I'm uh, getting rid of the white space I could actually put just for visually help me kind of check it out I could put spaces around this backslash n because my code replaces any spaces with nothing when it does the comparison. So sometimes I do that when there's a couple different things I wanna check and stuff, I'll just put the spaces there so visually it looks a little bit better for me. I'll, I'm gonna leave that just because it should work. Let me go over into the model solution now and let's actually build that so it's, uh, actually let's run, the, let's run it without that first. Run against the model solution. Let's see what it shows. And then I'll, uh, I'll fix it and we should see that it, it looks good. So right here, so it says print hello world, you're still good with that. But over here, it says expected Mr. Mazone, and then see on a new line, it shows he is awesome, but was Mr. Mazone. That's it. So it actually kicks it down to a new line. This is a little bit confusing sometimes to students because they don't realize, oh, there should be a new line there. But um, it does properly do the comparison. So if I go over to the model solution, for instance, and I go over to main two, I can add another system dot out uh, print ln he is awesome and um save this and now i have two print lines could students also put it with a backslash n and make it all one line yes but if you prompt them and say you know have one print statement say this print line ln another print line say this other thing obviously they'll usually do it that way and now if I run against the model solution, everything's good. So just a backslash n if you if you need to do that. Yeah, the one I did didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it again later. <laughs> I can check it out at the end too, if you if you want to hang around. I don't mind that at all. Okay. All right, let's check out a um, something with input. Now, input and output it's going to be. So I'm gonna create a new assignment. First and last name, we'll call this one. And let's say it's code that asks the user for their first name, they provide it, ask the user for their last name, and then it prints hello in their first and last name. Something probably when you first teach input, something like that is, is kind of an assignment you may have. All right, I'm gonna go over to the test bench. I'm 
I'm going to add a unit test. I'm just going to call this test. And I'm going to add the stuff that we added previously. So I'm just going to do a quick copy and paste and a bit of an explanation. We have java.io. We create these two variables here in order to capture the output. On setup, we were um, we make sure that we're keeping track of the output now instead, that the unit test is. On teardown, we set it back to just be the normal terminal um, is in charge of the output, the normal standard out, they call it. All right, now what would we want to do here for the input? Well, I'm going to go to, I'm just using this test default case. Again, you can create as many test um, case methods as you want um, to test multiple things for more complex stuff. I'm going to, and I'll, I'll show off that in a minute, but what we'll do for input is we're going to create a string variable. We'll just call it input and we'll set it equal to whatever you want to actually test. So for instance, um, I'm gonna test this code with my first name and my last name. Because remember, we want the student's code is gonna ask for two pieces, two input pieces of input, a first name and a last name. Um, and then it's supposed to print out hello with the person's name. So that's what we want to provide as input. How do we provide it as input? Well, we're going to use input stream now. Makes sense before we're using output stream. And so we're going to use, um, and we're going to say in is equal to new byte array uh, input stream this time. Input which is our input right here, dot get bytes. Kind of doing the opposite of what we did with the output stream, right? Where instead we captured it and then we converted um, fr from the bytes. Now we're, we're saying, all right, here's this string, convert it to bytes of what we would expect for the input. So it's going to insert it when the user's person's code asks for input, it's going to give them one. And then if it asks for input again, it will give them the next one and so on. Um, and then, then we're going to um, get the, the system in with an, um, I'm sorry, set in, similar mistake as what I made in, uh, in the first one, two in which is this byte array input stream we just created. And then we can do our normal thing where main, we can run the main method, null, and then we can do our assertion. Assert, assert equals, and whatever we wanna compare. For, for the, this is the output now. So this is how we provided an input. We provided two inputs because the new line each new line will provide a new input. And so we'll do our assert equals. And what we'll want to compare is, let's say I want it to say, hello, Joe Mazzone. Okay. I want to assert that that, and we can of course do our, you know, to lowercase, We can trim, we can uh, replace the spaces. You can do that stuff, but we're gonna compare that. That's our expected with what we actually get. What we actually get is output stream capture. We need to convert that to a string because it's gonna be bytes. Um, so to string. Dot, and we'll do the same thing. I'll actually just copy and paste it for the sake of time to lowercase trim and replace. So 
So we have that. So now this is how we set up our input. Again, for each individual input you have, you're going to use a new line. So backslash n. Even if you were asking for ints or doubles, you would still use this, um, put your input as a string because it's just something that's being typed in, think of it as, but you really, it's, it doesn't matter because it's gonna, it's gonna convert it for you. Let's run this against the template. Obviously it's gonna be wrong. I didn't change the template. All it does is print hello world, which was the example template we saw before. Expected hello, Joe Mazone, but got hello world. Excellent question by Amy also. Um, asked, can you create test cases after you publish or after students start submitting? You can. For instance, I met, sometimes you mess them up, right? And the students start submitting and they're wrong. You can go and edit it. And then the, as soon as you edit it and save, the student can click submit again and it runs the new test cases that you have set up. So, which is great. Or if you realize it later, you're at home and you're trying to put it into gradebook, right? You, and you go, how did everybody get this all wrong or something like that? Maybe it's a quick homework exercise. You can change it and you can run each student's code to make sure it auto grades also. So there are a number of things you can do. John, thank you for, I don't know, I don't know if you left yet, um, but the recording will be shared. Um, so thank you very much. So um, there's that input. Let's go over to the model solution. Let me just throw in a quick solution to this. All right, quick solution. We set up the scanner. Uh, we ask the user what the, what's their name. And so there is gonna be something wrong. So I'm gonna show off in a minute. So we ask them, what's their name? And then we get their name and we store an F name. What's their last name? Store in last name. Then we print out hello, concatenated with the first name, space, last name, exclamation point. Um, I'll just remove that because we didn't put that in. Okay, so we have that. Looks good. Run it, go over to uh, test bench. Now let's run this against our model solution. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, if I didn't import scanner at the top when I'm trying to quickly do a, a model solution. And we're good, we go over to test bench, model solution. Oof. Someone's just joining, I bet they think uh, they got the time zones wrong. All right, and so we have uh, expected, hello, Joe Mazone, but was, what is your first name? What is your last name? Hello, Joe Mazone. That's because that was all part of our output stream. So you got to remember, you recaptured the entire output stream. So that means that um, there's a couple of things we could do here. We could make sure in a prompt, we tell the student to say these things exactly because we're going to compare it for the output. Or this is what I like to do. And this happens with a lot of exercises you create, right? Really, all you care about is like the end result maybe when there's like these different inputs, you just care about what's printed in the end. So what you could do is this, instead of assert equals, I'm gonna say assert true, okay? And I'm gonna build a condition in here. I'm gonna say, if the output stream
dot ends with what we expect, then we know that their code's correct. So now you can just build a different test case, essentially. You can build a different, uh, now we have a condition in here. So output stream dot ends with hello Joe Mazone, then they're going to be correct. So now I can run this against the model solution. And it says correct, because that was true. It does end with that. If I change the model solution quick, don't put the last name in there, for instance. Back to test bench. It will say wrong. Now, the only thing is assert equals does give us that nice comparison. Assert true doesn't do that, just says A wasn't true. Um, so that's one of the things, but there are different ways that you can you can do different things. For instance, you could um, just capture the end of it. So uh, you could build some code that looks for the new line before that last print statement, right? Pull that out and then uh, do your assert equals. There are a number of things that you could do uh, to get it just right. Now, what I'm going to share with you is my website that I've created that has a, a bunch of these examples and hopefully growing. And I'm going to review one more little thing um, before we finish up here. So you can go over autograde.jomazone.net. And uh, on this website, I have some Python examples and Java examples for some unit testing even some of the ones we went over. If there's something not on here that you'd really like to see a certain type of example, uh, I do have this area where you can request an example, or if you build something and you you think it would be cool to share with others, um, please submit that to me to post on here because uh, it's a great resource. So um, if you build anything or you, you need anything specific, let me know and I can, I can do that. Uh, hopefully the, the year will start to be a little less crazy where I can I can add a little bit more to this website. Uh, another month, probably, I'll, I'll have a lot more. Um, so uh, one of the things I wanted to show is, and these are the easiest ones to test, and that's why I'm actually next year going to get to um, methods, just creating um, return methods or even void methods earlier. Again, kind of how I used to teach it. The new um, APCSA has you kind of do that later in the regular. I think I'm going to do it a earlier again, like I used to, um, because it, it's it's easier for me to do some of these tests also. For instance, let's say you wanted the students to build some code like this, just a simple method called add five. It accepts a, a number as um, an in, an integer parameter, and it just adds five to it. Okay. Let's say it was just something simple as that and it returns that number. This is all you would do to create some different test cases. Cert equals 10 is what we expect when we run example dot add five or main dot um, add five. If, if it was just the main method, this one happens to be called example, that's why. But if you left it as the main, it would say, um, I'm sorry, the main, uh, the class's name was main still. Main dot add five, give it five, it would be 10. Give it zero, it would be five. So you can do that. If you want them to run as individual test cases, so you can run assertions like this, just one assertion after another, but you can also build, um, like I said, you can rename this and have different test case methods that run. I usually only do that if it's really different or if you need to um, have like a calculation you do bef uh, like before you actually run your assertion, I'll run them as different um, test case methods. I'll call it test case one, test case two, test case with a description, something like that. Joe, are you saying that the return method tests are actually going to be easier than the output tests? Yeah, they're so easy. So um, this is literally all you have to set up for uh, a return method. So for a return method, if you just have the students build public, like this is just a static method, public static in add five, it returns, it returns a number. We want to just check to make sure it's doing the calculation properly we'd expect the students to do. This is all you say. 
you don't even need nothing. You don't need anything in the setup. You don't need anything in the um, uh, teardown. You just simply say assert equals. This is the value I expect when I call this particular the add five method with uh, a um, argument of five. When I call the add five method with an argument of zero, this is what happens. Um, now, one thing I would like to note to everyone is when you're working with doubles, note that the assert equals needs an additional parameter, needs an additional argument, because uh, there's another parameter called delta. Because now you're dealing with decimal numbers, so it needs to know plus or minus how much difference can I say this is true or not. So um, you'll notice over here, I have this one average. For instance, average would be a great one where you probably want them, um, you know, some method that returns an average to them to work with doubles or return a double at least. I would say, okay, I expect 5.4 when I call this and I give it these numbers, plus or minus 0 0.001. As long as you provide a plus minus or a delta, how much you, difference you'd accept um, in, in what's returned, Java will be okay with it. If you don't provide that and it returns doubles, it, you'll get an error and it's kind of a weird error message that you're like, what the heck's going on here? Um, but just note when you're working with doubles, you got to provide that delta value. Um, classes, when you're, you're actually constructing objects and stuff, um, right now all I have is uh, a two string and a void and, and you know, void type uh, methods. Um, because the other methods are just going to be the same as this return method ones, right? You just construct the object and then you call it instead. Two string, the reason why I have that is it's going to be the output ones that we did before. Now, what you may want to do is kind of this complex thing that I kind of have here. Um, notice that each time I construct a new object, so this one's an employee, and you give it, uh, what, what do I have for this example? Um, you give them an ID number, employee ID number, and an hourly salary. ID number is an int, salary is a double, the person's name is a string. Okay, so they're supposed to create that object. How do we test it out? Well, let's say we want to test to make sure their two string works properly. We have, um, notice I have multiple test cases, test two string number one, test two string number two. I construct the object, so employee, I named it E, new employee, I give it some information, test to make sure that the two string works the way I, I just told them to make it work. Test it with some different information, same thing. So all you would do for these assertions is you um, build, you or you construct the object as you'd want them to for a particular test case, and then you actually run the assert equals for the output. Or if you were running a method that belonged to an object that returns a certain numeric value, you would do it the same as the other ones. Don't worry, this is our this is our last one anyway, so I'm just going to open it to questions next. But thank you everyone for came, that came. So these examples are all on my website, so you can go, you can get that. Let me paste that website one more time, just in case you need it. Um, but it has some good examples. And again, request to me if you need a certain example, you're just confused on how to do something. For instance, random numbers. I did build one. I don't know why I don't have it up on the website, but I can, I can do that. Random numbers is a, is a tough one. Um, but there are ways for you to make it so that uh, it generates on your test cases a um, the same numbers each time so that you can kind of test to make sure the student's random number code works correctly or that has some randomness built into it. Correct, yes, you set the seed, you use a fixed seed. So uh, I can't remember if it's set seed the method or something like that. Um, that's part of that random module, but Let's see, I don't think, yeah, I didn't put anything in here, but I built out an example for somebody that had asked me, and I don't know why I didn't upload it to the site. Ah, they know about Seeds for Minecraft, exactly. All right, any other questions from anybody who's left? What I'll do in a minute is I'll stop the recording if there's uh, not any kind of questions that you think are good for the recording, and, I'll, and then you can just freely open where I can check out somebody's code if something wasn't happening. 
something wasn't working right. Um, I'm just one thing I could ask if I can. Um, do you know whether uh, coding rooms have any plans to do things like C sharp? Because virtually everyone in the UK uses C sharp for their um, object oriented. Sort of, yeah, once we get to objects oriented, and uh, I know that uh, it's probably difficult because of mono. Mm -hmm. but, um, I see there are some solutions around online. You haven't heard anything. I guess you're teaching Java, so. Yeah, I have not heard anything. So um, what I would suggest to do is send um, support at codingrooms.com yeah. an sure. email with the, with the unit testing framework that yep. you found online. Um, okay. And of course they could put it on their, you know, their roadmap and they're very, very good at stuff like that. Really taking feedback. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things that I find great. Uh, and I know that they are looking at some other testing frameworks and things that uh, allow you to do some other unique stuff. So they are looking at that as options. Thanks.